after World War II, much of Eastern Europe came under control of the Soviet Union. They fell behind what was known as the Iron Curtain. This was the case for the nation of Hungary, located in Central Eastern Europe on the edge of the Iron Curtain. Soviet leader Joseph Stalin in 1953, news slowly came out of some of the corrupt and heinous acts committed by him and his administration. People were outraged, and this served as the catalyst that set the Hungarian people to action. The Hungarians had been subject to the oppressive and violent rule of Matyas Rakos, the Hungarian Prime Minister, who had been put in place as a puppet for the Soviet Union. In 1956, Rakoshi resigned and many people, including university students, workers, and soldiers, were emboldened in their cause for a free Hungary. In the capital of Budapest, many gathered in protest of the Warsaw Pact and any foreign occupation of Hungary and demanded independence and democracy. They moved throughout the city toppling statues of Stalin and shouting anti-Soviet chants. They also cut the communist coat of arms out of the center of the Hungarian flag. When a crowd of protesters reached the Radio Budapest building, they were fired upon by members of the communist secret police, thus igniting all out revolution. With the rapid spread of the uprising, Naj Ibrahim ascended to power and promised to deliver on the people's desire for free election and independence from the Soviet Union. Fighting spread throughout all of the country as more and more people joined the cause of the revolution. Hungarian freedom fighters were often armed with nothing more than small rifles, stones, and Molotov cocktails. Despite this, they were able to have enormous success against the much better armed Soviets. After several days of fighting, Naj requested that the Soviet troops be pulled out of Hungary. On October 28, 1956, Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev complied and the Soviet troops were ordered to move out of Hungary. For five days there was freedom in Hungary. The new Hungarian government introduced democracy, freedom of speech, and freedom of religion. Many who had been held in prison unjustly as enemies of the state were released, including many prominent religious leaders who had not complied with Soviet demands. During this time, hundreds of suspected Soviet officials or supporters were executed by factions of the Hungarian freedom movement. On November 3rd, Naj announced that Hungary would be withdrawing from the Warsaw Pact, thus completely severing any ties it had to the Soviet Union. Unwilling to allow Hungary to withdraw from the Warsaw Pact, Khrushchev intended to quell the rebellion and re-establish Soviet dominance over Hungary. At dawn of November 4th, close to 1,000 Soviet tanks entered Budapest. For the next several days, intense fighting took place in the streets of Budapest, which left much of the city in ruins. With the Hungarians being outgunned and outmatched, the Soviets were able to regain control of the city. Eventually, the revolutionaries were forced to succumb to the Soviets all throughout the country, and many Hungarians were killed, fled the country, or were arrested and sent to Soviet war camps. Naj himself was arrested, tried, and executed for his role in the uprising. Though the success of the revolution was short-lived and many Hungarians lost their lives, Hungarians today are proud that their country was able to take a stand against such a powerful tyrant. President John F. Kennedy spoke of the revolution. October 23, 1956 is a day that will live forever in the annals of free men and nations. It was a day of courage, conscience, and triumph. No other day since history began 
has shown more clearly the eternal unquenchability of men's desire to be free, whatever the odds against success, whatever the sacrifice required.